Right, well this evening I'm out to do a little bit of rabbiting for a change and um, I've got the air rifle with me, I've brought the Brocock Sniper out this evening, it's an FAC air rifle in .25 calibre so it punches with a bit of authority um, but I've also got with me a, uh, a new bit of kit which um, Thomas Jacks just sent me down and this is a Pixfra, um, I've not heard of one of these before but a Pixfra Ranger and it's a budget sort of entry level kind of thermal spotter but it actually looks pretty good to be fair certainly for the money looking online they're around about sort of 1200 to 1500 pound um, and for that sort of money it's got a record function on it and various different colour palettes I won't go into too much detail because I haven't even read a gump on it but it looks pretty decent so I'm not going to play around with that tonight though because the battery level on it uh, isn't particularly good because I haven't charged it up as I say it literally arrived today so I'm going to be using the Pulsar Mergers this evening I like these as well, especially when I'm using the air rifle with the rangefinder on there with the uh, with the air gun, um, especially in 0.25, it's quite a heavy pellet so it gives quite a sort of launched trajectory so uh, yeah, I'm going to use that for that. I've also got the um, Pulsar C50, I've got that sat there on the uh, Brocock Sniper and um, good little bit of kit this and as you'll see I'll get a bit of footage this evening and hopefully knock over a few bunnies with it so anyway enough waffling on let's get out and have a little look around and see what we can find right so the uh, area that I'm going to go and have a look at this evening is a bit of ground that I don't normally shoot over there's not normally an awful lot on there there's a few rabbits on there but certainly not plague numbers I don't think um, but the farmer spotted a few on there and I've had a little drive around with them actually and there were a few more than I, than I expected to see early evening um, but it's a, a kind of mixed bit of ground there's some areas which are sort of uh, marshy with some patches of long grass and what have you and there's also a couple of fields which he's just, he's just sowing so it's all just uh, freshly seeded grass and um, there's a couple of areas there where the rabbits have, have just come out of the hedgerows and stuff and just eaten away patches that he's sowing so he's um, really concerned about that more than anything so I'm just going to have a little wander around just see if I can um, knock a few over just to, just to keep him happy. A nice healthy bunny that you can see I don't know if you can see but that's where the shot went in just between the uh, the eye and the ear good place to to hit rabbits that it just turns them off couple more out there and we're a couple of hundred meters away so I probably stalked down alongside this uh, this ditch here and um, get a bit closer to them so it doesn't seem to be loads of rabbits around, it looks like it's just one or two dotted about. Um, that's quite typical with farmers now though, they, they see two or three rabbits and uh, to them it's like, oh my god, plague, you know. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'll walk down and have a go, see if I can get one of these. One thing I don't like doing is carrying loads of rabbits when I'm trying to shoot or carrying loads of anything much really to be honest with you. So I like to travel fairly light. Just hang this rabbit on the fence here. I don't know if uh, many of you guys use these little knives but I think they're brilliant. The uh, Havilon knives. And a little pouch with a packet of blades. They've got like little surgical blades in them. I don't know if you can really see that but 
just got like a little surgical blade, like a little scalpel. But they are uh, proper razor sharp and uh, they're ideal for gutting and skinning and the such like. But you do have to just watch your fingers with them because they are quite unforgiving, but very good. So, oh, that was good to get that one. We have a lot of problems with foxes now on this farm and we'll be coming up for lambing before too long. So uh, any chance I get to take out a fox, be it with an air rifle, centre fire, rim fire, whatever, I will take it if I can uh, if I can get it in close enough for a shot with something like this. And that one was more than close enough. That was probably about 30 yards. And uh, that's just dropped him beautiful. He was just coming through the grass. I just straight between the eyes and he just went over um, but yeah as I say the FAC um, air rifle is doing about 55 foot pounds so it's got quite a bit of uh, bit of oomph there um, I've shot them a bit further I think probably about as far as I would want to shoot them and I have shot them is um, about 50 meters and uh, again as long as you put the the, uh, the pellet in the right place it will do the business um, much like with the rabbits between the eye and the ear sweet spot just again just switches them off oh let's go and have a look at him oh, as you can see the air rifle has done a very nice clean job on him straight between the eyes there there's a big old dog fox that one quite grey as well quite unusual nice black or dark tail on him but yeah, he was about 30 yards, I should think, and um, strapped between the eyes. Job done. These are a good bit of kit too, these tripods. I like using these, some people like using sticks and that, but um, I just find these are great. You can just open them out, plonk them down, and then uh, it gives you a nice stable shooting platform, and you can just pivot around as well and track them if they start running. Sometimes when the uh, grass is a little bit long like that, you just have to give them just a little or something just to give them to lift their heads up so you can get a clear shot, but works every time. So 
So a quick tip, when you're carrying rabbits, always carry them with the backs facing the way you're walking. That way, when you're walking along towards any other rabbits that might be out feeding still, you're not swinging that bright white belly fur, waving that around like a lantern in the dark. So always keep the darker side or the back towards the uh, rabbits or the direction you're walking. Well that was a pretty successful evening out I think with the uh, Pulsar C50 there and the air rifle. Managed to knock over eight rabbits in all and the fox obviously, the dog fox there which was a, a definite bonus. Um, don't get many foxes on here but they do uh, cause a lot of problems um, in the spring and uh, the farmer always appreciates any that do get knocked over so that was good. Um, and uh, yeah, similar sort of situation really with the rabbits, not masses of rabbits on here, but they do do a lot of damage. One rabbit can do a surprising amount of, uh, of grazing, uh, you know, over a few evenings and that, and it, it, does, uh, it does all mount up. So every rabbit we knock over is, um, again, a bonus. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode and please subscribe and thanks for watching. got a uh, little herd of hinds and calves and what looks like one spiker um, down the end of the field on some sugar beet. The wind's good, it's coming straight towards us from where the deer are. They're 540 metres away. Um, the only thing we can really do is just tuck into the wood on my left and just come down the edge of the wood and hope we can get close enough to get a shot if that spiker's sort of poor enough to take. The only problem is there might be red deer in the wood waiting to come out on the field. Um, so we'll just have to go steady and keep looking as we go. So we've got a, a fairly deep ditch that runs down the edge of the wood so we'll try and get down that as far as possible. Um, there's quite a few peacocks that are feral on the estate, they're moving back into the wood. So that might be another problem, they might flap out and spook the red deer but I can only see the others have um, gone in towards the wood, or what it looks like, or they might have just gone round the corner of the wood. We'll just get down a bit closer in case that spike comes back to these two that are still here. Keep down. They're all coming back this way. Can't hear us in the wind. Here he comes. I'll wait for a nice side on shot if we can get one. He's done. Cool. Good reaction. 
hopefully you guys will see on the film, he uh, jumped up and kicked out with his back legs. That's a good heart lung shot. Um, it was just over 100 metres in the end. Um, when we were first on them, it was about 160 metres, but they just worked a little bit closer to us. So that's good. Obviously, we're what we on the 19th of October, so it's sort of coming up for the end of the red rut, really. Um, so that's why that spike is just pushing those hinds around. Um, but he's also keeping an eye on the woods just in case a big stag comes out and pushes him off, obviously. So, good. Just after six o'clock. Be dark in about 20 minutes, so we'll get this one picked up. Back to the larder. So there's the shot on the way in. Um, halfway up the body, just on the back line of the shoulder. Uh, it's run like 30 metres or something. So, just a single spike spiker. So it's not a bad one, they're quite nice long spikes and quite thick at the bottom, but there's no, um, no additional points on this. And uh, there's quite a lot of spikers running about this year with extra points on the top and little brow tines at the bottom. So those are obviously the ones to leave to try and get like those more multi-point animals uh, or antlers going. So yeah, good. Get the trailer, get this one sorted out. It's uh, quarter past six on the 20th of October, so we we're actually supposed to film today. Um, but as you saw, this film started off with a, a little stalk yesterday evening um, because unfortunately, someone that will remain nameless, Emily, um, cocked up the dates a little bit um, and needed to come up a little bit earlier. So we uh, managed to get that stalk in yesterday evening just for we lost light um, and we went over to the big wood and uh, managed to get onto a, a red spiker. Uh, with a group of hinds and calves. Um, so this morning uh, we're going to go and look for red again in a different area. Um, it's quite mild, it's sort of towards the end of the rut so hopefully we'll see a lot of young stags um, and spikers moving around the hinds trying to get in now the older stags are sort of finishing off. Um, so yeah we've got rain coming in about nine so hopefully it'll hold off until we've you know been out and done our uh, stalk. So yeah just get the gators on, finish my cup of tea, and then we'll crack on out there. So we've just backed out of where we were and we've come round. We're now just going to go through this wood on the right hand side of the area we were just looking into. I just want to keep on the edge so we can look into that field in case anything moves out into it from the far side. So there's an early middle aged stag. It's about 200 metres in front of us. Yeah. 
13, 14 points. But he's coming into his prime now. So again, he's obviously one to leave for the next few years. But there's quite a bit of roaring going on around us. But the rut's starting to wind down now. You can see he's just sort of stood there a bit tired. that are in front of us with this young stag. They've both got four points, so they're probably ones to leave. Another spiker walked into the wood with just two spikes, so I just want to wait and see if we get a, a look at that one again. But there's a bigger stag coming towards us, pushing some hinds towards us. Um, obviously those two spikers with the young stag um, and then there was a hind and a bigger stag coming straight towards us and the hind sort of had clocked us and was standing there looking at us um, and they're all getting a little bit jumpy uh, so we've actually taken one of those four point spikers um, out of the two that were there I've taken the one that sort of got thinner slightly weedier antlers there wasn't a lot in it really um, but at the end of the day, we've got to shoot something for the cull. Um, and at least we had two to choose from. Ideally, we'd have taken that one that walked over um, with just the two single spikes. But um, he must have just walked straight in the wood, uh, which is unusual because they don't usually come into the wood where the big stags are. So we um, waited as long as we could to see if he come back out, but he obviously didn't. So I don't think we've disturbed too much. There's still some roaring in the distance and the big stag that was here with the hind, he'll just move a bit down the wood and uh, carry on doing what he was doing. So we'll just wait a few minutes. I'm not sure if it fell over in the field or whether it jumped the fence and just fell over in the wood. So we'll just give it five minutes um, and then we'll go and have a look. Hmm. Nice. So here we go, um, what can we say about this one? It was stood on a bit of a funny angle, so shot it front of the shoulder on the other side um, and the bullets come diagonally just into the back of the heart lung area. Um, don't know if you guys can see, there's a little lump there, that's actually the bullet um, just lodged in the skin just before it was going to come out. So we'll be able to cut that out of the larder and have a look at that. Um, yeah, it's quite a nice stag. 
Um, so this is the same age animal as the one we shot last night, but obviously this has got um, two extra points already in its first set of antlers. So in an ideal world, if that single spiked uh, spiker had come along, we'd have taken that one over this one. Um, so yeah, but like we said, we've got to shoot something. Um, we've got to get the the uh, the cull figures. Obviously, have got to be right. Um, and there's you know a good number of these about anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Um, and obviously, as we were walking through there, we just happened onto this nice uh, six point antler. Um, off a sort of fairly uh, early middle-aged animal. Um, so, you know, from a single spike or, you know, three, four pointer in their first year to something like this at probably six years old. Um, it's quite impressive. And obviously different ones have more points than this. Um, obviously when these have finished growing, they're just like a, a dead bone. Um, but when they're growing, they're like a bone in our body, so they've got that velvet covering on them, um, which supplies blood to the antler so it can grow. And at its height, they're growing a centimetre a day. So, yeah, pretty cool find. Um, obviously, good that we got something shot. Nice that we got the bullet we can have a look at as well. Uh, and we haven't disturbed too many of the other deer at the same time. So we'll go back, get the trailer, get this one back to the larder and... Uh, yeah, that'll be the morning. If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.